Hi guys, welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to show you a great video on how to easily contour and tear your teeth. This is a step-by-step -step tutorial where that you can really easily follow to create your best anterior restorations. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do so. Hit the notification bell so you don't miss any upcoming videos. And if you want to see the full video, I also have a new Patreon page where you can support the channel. <clears throat> like everything that you start new, contouring anterior teeth can be very difficult. So I created a step-by-step -step video that you can easily follow to create your best anterior restoration. So without further ado, let's go to the video. When we fabricate a ceramic crown for a tooth, there are important things beyond just fitting well and the collusion. One big factor is that the crown should feel and look like a natural part of the mouth and the face. When we make a crown, we look for a lot of things, for example, how the teeth are lined up and how big the visible part of the tooth is and how the bite comes together. Getting all these details right helps us to make the crown that blends in perfectly. So in this video, we are going to focus on the shape of the part of the tooth that you can see in the mouth, the clinical part. This video is all about looking at the basic shape of the tooth crowns. We're going to use the front teeth as an example, but the same idea applies to other teeth in the mouth like the laterals and the canines. The proximal contact area should not be left rough after reshaping. It could abrade the stone curves and thus lose the ability to produce an accurate contact area. The first step on contouring the teeth is a long axis. The long axis is an imaginary line that runs vertically through the center of a tooth. All atomical features must be in the correct relationship to the long axis for the teeth to appear natural. There are certain rules we need to follow when it comes to the long axis and I usually draw directly on the crown for better visualization. The lateral incisor zenith collides with the long axis of the tooth, whereas the zenith of the central incisors and the canines are slightly distal to the long axis. Therefore, when we draw the long axis on the tooth, we start at the center of the incisor edge and draw a line down to the gingiva. When we take a look, especially at the canine from a frontal view, it appears that the long axis is tilted heavily mesially. This is called mesial inclination. When we shift our view directly on the canine, we notice that it is rather straight. This, let's call it optical illusion, appearance results from the fact that the area distally of the long axis is usually not visible. In natural tooth shapes, there are three primary shapes, oval, straight, and tapered. Each shape has different characteristics from a label view, incisor view, and a proximal view. This results in three planes. We can draw the three planes directly on the tooth. In this video, I'm focusing on a tapered shape, so the cervical plane is very prominent. The middle plane is long and concave, and the incisor plane is small and curved inwards. When we transition to the canine, we notice that the middle plane is getting gradually smaller and the cervical plane and the incisor plane are getting larger. This can be seen and noticed the most at the canine. What do these three planes mean for contouring? Each plane is a guide for us when we take a rubber wheel or a diamond burr to shape the crown. I will demonstrate using a medium soft rubber wheel to roll in the cervical and incisor plane based on the tooth shape I'm trying to achieve. This step must be done prior all other steps. 
for example, defining the line angles or surface texture. In this example, I'm using a medium strong rubber wheel and I'm thinning down the margins a little bit because I added some porcelain. After this, I'm switching to a softer rubber wheel and I am rolling in the incisal edge carefully at the marked line. Now we can begin to draw on the line angles on the tooth. And each tooth shape, for example, oval, tapered, or square, has certain characterizations of the incisal edge. If you look at the mesial and distal corner, for example, on an oval tooth, they are both round. If you look at the mesial and distal corner of a square tooth, they are both square. If you look at, in this example, of a tapered tooth shape, the mesial is more square and the distal edge, incisal edge, is more rounded. Different tooth shapes have different outlines of the line angles. For example, if you have a square tooth, the mesial and distal proximal surfaces are parallel to each other and perpendicular to the incisal edge. They are also slightly curved. If you have an oval tooth, for example, the outline is more narrow at the cervical and is then more square on the incisal. If you have a tapered tooth, the outline is much more narrow at the cervical and much more wider at the incisal edge. All of the line angles at the cervical area are basically an extension of the root. So if you draw on your line angles, they are transitioning into the root area. And this is how you draw on the line angles. So the first step of contouring the line angles is to take a medium soft rubber wheel. And what I like to do is I'm following the drawn line and I'm creating a sharp edge. After this, I'm taking the rubber wheel or you can use a diamond burn in this case and start to roll in, basically softening out this sharp edge because you don't want to have any sharp edges in natural tools. You want to have everything rounded up. So I'm rounding it up towards the incisal edge and I'm rounding it up towards my incisal first plane and also into my cervical plane. So you get a nice transition from cervical to incisal plane. After that, you are drawing on the line angles with a pencil to double check if the contouring with the rubber wheel was correct and you create a mirror image of the contour lateral tooth. Right now, I want to show you a simple step-by-step -step way on how to establish the primary plane. For those of you who do not know what the primary plane is, per definition, it is the flat plane on anterior teeth inside the mesial and distal lobes, which is in alignment with the long axis. The first step is to draw one point at the incisal edge at the long axis. The second point is at the end of the cervical one third along the long axis. The third point is at the mesial incisal corner slightly distal of the line angle. The fourth point is along the long axis about one millimeter above point two. The fifth point is more an estimate and on the distal side of the long axis. It depends on the tooth shape and how much you would like to emphasize the distal line angle. A good idea to create a mirror image of the primary plane is to turn the tooth around and hover it over the contralateral tooth and mark the points at the incisal edge. Then transfer the points along the long axis to the contralateral tooth. The simplest way to create or to draw on the primary plane is to connect the points you just drew on in a U-shape form. With a diamond burr, I'm going to start to slightly hollow out the first U-shape, the first primary plane, the mesial primary plane. 
And it's up to you what kind of tooth shapes you're intending to do. For example, a rounded tooth shape has a less of a primary plane, has some, but not as pronounced as, for example, a tapered one or a, a square one. So carefully smooth it out towards the incisal and towards the gingival area. You can go deeper if you like, but like I said, it, it depends on the tooth shape. And by creating the primary plane, you created a physical long axis. And this long axis defines so much. It defines the direction of the tooth. It defines the angle of the tooth. So you have to be extremely careful that you create a contralateral primary plane on both sides. I see technicians working on teeth all the time in an angle and creating the primary planes in an angle. And then all the long axes are slanted to one side. All the primary planes are slanted to one side, which gives the tooth an illusion of uh, inclination either to the left or to the right. So be careful when you define the primary planes that are A, symmetrical, and B, are following the long axis. The S-curve is a curving depression of the labial surface of an incisor in the shape of an elongated S. The curve starts in the distal gingival area and blends into the central lobe causing a pleasing visual blending of the tooth into the tissue. The S-curve tends to emphasize the length and fullness of the mesial lobe and shorten the distal lobe, reinforcing the long axis of the tooth. How to create a vertical depression? If you observe carefully the photographs of natural teeth, you will clearly notice that teeth have vertical depressions. They are never perfectly straight or linear, but rather curved in shape. The general features of a depression is that they are most often wider in the cervical third and in the incisal edge. The fanning out of the depression is emphasized by the wear affecting the convex zones, which are most exposed. Depressions are deeper in the center of the tooth. Since this area is most concave, thus more protected against natural or mechanical wear, such as contact with lips or the use of the toothbrush. To create a surface texture, we shall always begin with the vertical depressions. We draw all the depressions on the tooth and then carve them out with a round tipped flame shaped diamond burr. To do this, we follow the movement changing the angle of the burr on the tooth surface. When the burr is flatter on the surface, we will be making wider depression. Straightening the axis of the burr, the tip will dig deeper, and we change the angle accordingly to the zone and the features of the depression. In reflected light, the relief of these vertical depressions is highlighted, and they really look just like those on natural teeth. So what is the relationship between vertical depressions and the tooth shapes? We can classify anterior teeth as having three typical dental shapes, oval, tapered, and square. If we have to create the surfaces of these teeth, we need to adapt the depressions to the basic shape. Oval teeth are more convex and have a rounder outer shape, curved transition angles, and few lobes. These teeth, due to their convexity, are more exposed to wear by the soft tissues and by the mechanics of the brushing. These teeth, as you can observe, have not very marked vertical depressions. It, is, it would be a mistake to create too many and to highlight them too much. Taper teeth are by definition more triangular in contour. They are often made up of two prominent proximal lobes with a central concavity. These teeth have several marked vertical depression. The proximal lobes protect them from the natural and mechanical wear. It will be necessary here to create numerous vertical depressions and even some horizontal ones.
square teeth have a more linear outer contour. After having made vertical depressions, it will be necessary to reproduce horizontal depressions. Teeth originally display incremental growth lines. As the years go by, these lines gradually disappear with wear, leaving in their space only a portion of the horizontal depression or simply fine lines in the concavities. To create these lines, we can use a fine diamond burr or tungsten tips that we modify on a diamond disc. So first we have to draw a few guidelines with the pencils to make sure all the horizontal lines are going into the right direction. And we're going to re reproduce the wider and deeper depressions with a diamond burr. Then we're going to use our modified tungsten tip and we trace the final lines in the center of the tooth. The deeper depressions cut across the transitional line angles and go all around the tooth, which is why we can follow the same procedure with drawing on and grinding on the palatal side of the tooth. Thank you guys for watching the video and if you made it that far, congratulations, you are very dedicated to the dental technology. Like again, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do so, hit the notification bell and support the channel by subscribing at my new Patreon page. The link is in the description. Thank you very much.